Today, um, I'm wearing my crown. I hope you guys don't mind. I like to wear it on my birthday. And um, my sister, my sister Jessica called me last night. And she goes, you better wear your crown tomorrow. You make me wear it all day long when it's my birthday. And I'm like, okay, I'll wear the crown tomorrow. <laughs> it's actually very comfortable. It's actually very comfortable. Anyway, so I hope you guys don't mind. I'm a little silly. You guys know I'm a little wacky. <laughs> I'm one of those flowers that's a little more colorful than the other flower. <laughs> Today's reading is such a good one, guys. It's a reading that we, as, as followers of Jesus... Good morning, Anne-Marie. Oh, thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you. <laughs> She's wishing me happy birthday. Thank you. Um... Today's reading is very short, but very profound, very profound reading. Because Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to us. And he's telling us in this reading that sometimes we don't see. Good morning, Joe. Oh, I was just talking about you a minute ago. <laughs> Good morning, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Kamran. Kamran, Kamran. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Good morning, guys. Today's re reading is very short, but it's a really profound one. It's one we can meditate on because sometimes in our lives we have times when we don't understand why things are happening, why things are happening. But we need to trust and have faith like the disciples did. In today's short reading, Jesus is letting them know what's going to happen. And they're not quite comprehending it, understanding what's going to happen. But he's explaining it to them. Listen, listen well, what I'm telling you. A lot of them didn't understand, but they still followed him. They still trusted in him. They still had faith because they knew he, he was the one. Even though they didn't quite understand what was going on, like we don't at times in our lives. We don't understand why things happen. Then I think of Isaiah, Isaiah um, 55, 8, 9, which says that his ways are much higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than I, our, our thoughts. So there's no way we can understand or comprehend what God is really going to do in our lives. We can't even understand what heaven is going to be like. We try to. We have a lot of like little hints here and there in the Bible and in our lives, which... So here's the reading. The reading is going to be today in Luke. And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. While everyone was marveling at all that Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Listen carefully to what I am about to tell you. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand what he meant. It was hidden from them, so they did not grasp, and they were afraid to ask him about it. So they didn't completely, fully understand what Jesus was saying to them, that he was going to be put in the hands of men. And amongst all those disciples was Judas. He didn't understand either. He didn't know what he was about to do. It's just something that took over. Sometimes I think there's so much evil in the world. Sometimes we think, why does God allow so much evil to happen? Could you think of anything more evil than what Jesus was put through? The sacrifice of Jesus and what happened to him, how he was, how he was um, crowned with thorns. I mean, how evil is that? How he was crowned with thorns, and how everybody just hid away because they were scared to admit it. Even Peter himself, the way he carried his cross, the way he carried his cross, the way he fell three times, yet he kept getting back up to teach us, to show us 
what our lives as Christians will be like as well. Maybe not to that extent, but he did all that for, for love for us. And he's trying to tell them now, watch and see. Something's going to happen. You guys got to be prepared. He was preparing them for the upcoming passion that was going to happen. But they didn't quite understand it. Anne Maria is saying, God gave us free will, and God is a permissive God. Yes. Amen. Amen. He was, he was trying to let them know. Let's open up another quick little uh, reading, which is John. Can't see it. <laughs> And it, it says here, it's in his words, it's in red. He is saying, I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. He was preparing them. He was letting them know what was upcoming, so that when it did happen, they would know that, oh my goodness, this is him. This was the Messiah. He said this was going to happen. It happened exactly. And on the third day, he rose. He rose again. Everything that happened, happened. Even though they were doubting. Even though they were doubting. They, he did it all for us. Everything he said that was going to happen, happened. And he did it for us. And he did it out of love to open up the gates of heaven for us. So, yes. It says down here, that disciples didn't understand Jesus' words about his death. They still thought of Jesus as only an earthly king, and they were concerned about their places in the kingdom he would set up. So they ignored Jesus' words about his death and began arguing about who would be the greatest. Wow. And just like them, we are put sometimes in that situation. We forget about Jesus. We forget about what he wants for us, what he has written in his laws that he wants us to obey. We forget. We look at the shiny things of the world. We need to, we can have shiny things in our world, but we need to not let them be our God. Right? Like today I'm wearing my tiara, but that's because it's my birthday. I still know, you know, I still know what's the main thing in life. It's not the shiny. It's it's God. It's Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm opening up my birthday with prayer. Amen. We need to open up every day with prayer, with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, so much for another year in our lives. Another day. Another day to breathe. Another day to enjoy your beautiful miracle out there of the sunshine and the air and the, and the blue skies and the flowers. Pretty soon we're going to have fall leaves, Lord. Just be with us, Lord. Continue guiding us through our lives. Continue protecting us. We have faith and trust in you, Lord. No matter what the trials are, we will... We will endure them with faith and with trust in you, that you have a plan for our lives. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Amen. So, let's move on to the devotional, which is a really good one as well. They did not understand Luke 9.45. The disciples couldn't figure out what Jesus meant when he told them that he was to be handed over to men. But this wasn't the first time, nor would it be the last, that the disciples did not understand Jesus. After he fed the 5,000, Mark says the disciples had not understood the incidents of the loaves. When Jesus warned them against the leaven of the Pharisees, they were confused and thought he was talking about the fact that they had forgotten to bring bread with them. Like the disciples, we face situations in which we don't fully understand what Jesus seems to be saying or doing. In some instances, it may, seem, it, it may even seem like he is absent. This can happen in times of trial. 
but even in our everyday lives, we can encounter circumstances that leave us scratching our heads and wondering what God is up to. How then do we reconcile our, our circumstances with our human desire to understand what God is doing and to keep on trusting him through it? Look at the disciples. They continued to follow Jesus even when they did not understand him because they already had a deep relationship with him. They trusted that he loved them and had their best interest at heart. So lean into your relationship with the Lord. Honestly bring him your thoughts, feelings, and questions. Then try to quiet your heart and wait for his response. Perhaps an image, memory, or scripture passage will help to, to will help keep this in mind, assuring you of his love and faithfulness, or you might experience a sense of peace. Even if you don't receive an answer or solution, keep going to Jesus. Keep opening your Bible. Keep praising him. Keep expressing your love to him. Keep praying. He will not be silent forever. He will respond. At the time, the disciples didn't understand why Jesus had to die. But eventually, the Lord revealed it to them. When he rose from the dead, May we, like the disciples, place our trust in our Lord and believe that in his perfect timing, he will reveal his plan to us. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Yes. We're confused most of our lives, guys. We're confused most of our lives. But we need to just remember who really truly loves us, who died for us. We need to follow him with trust and faith, and he will help us through. We just need to grab that hand, never let go. Amen. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Good morning, Neem. Good morning. Thank you, Don. Don's wishing me a happy birthday. I am walking right now. It is beautiful. Yes, Anne-Marie, you see the beautiful blessing that God allows us to see through our eyes. Our eyes are such a miracle we take for granted. You know, one eye, the, the intricate of inside of an eye if you look at that you would go oh my goodness and then God makes another one just like it and not nobody in this earth has the same set of eyes that's that alone is amazing that's just a little thing could you imagine everything else he's made this creation everything is created we're so thankful his wisdom is amazing so how could we even try to understand that? We can't. We just got to give into it and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And just look at the marvel of it. And just imagine what heaven is going to be like if it's so, so amazing here on earth with all the evil. Heaven will have no evil. Without evil, we couldn't have the beauty of what he did. He made out of the evil that was done to him. The evil that was done to him. I just showed you some pictures. At the end, when he rose, such joy, such amazement and love came from that evil. So that's the way it's going to always be with God. If you follow him and you allow him to guide you, even if you go through tough times in your life, you will overcome them with joy in the end with joy in the end he will take us up to glorify his heavenly father in our glorified bodies which will have no more pain no more no more doubt no more sin no more sin at all it's going to be amazing so let's do a little um a little poem a little birthday poem <laughs> before we say bye-bye for this for this uh, reading for this morning which is from my little book when god when god what's it called when god thinks of you he smiles i tell you there is a joy in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner who repents luke 15:10 at this age, you try to brush it off. Act like it's no big deal. It's just another birthday, right? 
But inside your inner child is giddy with anticipation. What's go who's going to remember? What special surprises await my day? And so you succumb to your mind's delight and indulge in whatever treat comes your way. No diet today. <laughs> you smile as someone slides you a piece of cake. It's just time to celebrate. Did you know that God is celebrating you too? Not only because you were born on this earth, but also because the world would not be the same without your unique personality. You have something to add, something to do that no one else can. Every day is a new opportunity to see and celebrate and trust God. To celebrate the trust God has put in you. Don't worry, the wrappings may look different than your average gift. But God has hidden surprises in every corner of your life waiting for you to open and discover just how well he knows you, loves you, and has purpose, purposed every part of your life for good. So dig in. Today is your day to celebrate a wonderful life with your loving God. Amen. Amen. That's a beautiful little poem, isn't it? The father said to his slave, Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf, kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has found and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Luke 15, 20, 24. We all know that story. That's a beautiful story. That's a beautiful story. Amen. So yes, the Lord, he went through a lot. He went through the passion for us to rise again and to enlighten everybody. Everybody did eventually get enlightened what everything that he did, why it happened. And he sent, once he rose from the dead, he promised everybody, I have to do this in order to leave you with the comforter, in order to leave you with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And centuries later, here we are with the Holy Spirit, thanks to our Lord, going through what he went through, that terrible evil for the awesome joy he left us. Right? Amen. So yes, he left us with the Holy Spirit. He left us with the Comforter. He left us with himself, with himself inside of us to guide us, to help us. That's the best gift of all. That's the best gift of all. We all have that every day, every day, every minute. We just need to not forget it. We need to not forget it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly and give you peace and love and joy and perseverance out there and wisdom and protection. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful, blessed rest of your weekend. I'll see you all Monday, God willing. I'll see you in a little while at around 9 o'clock for the um, rosary, and then again at three for Divine Mercy. Bye-bye. Love you guys.